Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, this is Alex from Periphery. You're turned into Hit the Floor. Steph from Hit The Floor magazine and I'm here in London um, at the Camden Underworld with Alex from Periphery. Hey Steph. Hello. How's that gum? Oh it's really good. We just it had is. gum because he, Alex just explained <laughs> that... <laughs> we don't he, need to talk about that <laughs> on the camera. We really don't. We can just say that the gum is good and, and it's fine. Okay, it. we'll just forget that. That's fine. So how are you anyway? I'm good. I'm excellent. Um, we've been touring around the UK for the past, I'd say, 10 days or so. Today's the final day in London. The show's been sold out for weeks, if not... Um, a month and some at this point so mm -hmm. we've been excited about this show for a long time and it's finally the day is finally here there's a lot of industry coming out a lot of our people from Roadrunner Records that we're excited to meet mm -hmm. a lot of uh, interviews and stuff like yourself that we're <laughs> excited to meet mm -hmm. so it's a fun filled day we're excited I mean is this the first time you played in London? Yes it is we've been in and out of London we stayed we flew into Heathrow which is just outside mm -hmm. um, and we had to do a bit of business in London the first day that we got here as well as we did an XFM radio show, um, live recording, uh, earlier last week. So we had to come into London for that, but now today is the day that we're actually performing in London. So I mean, it must feel pretty good, like sold out show, first time. It's a ridiculous honor. We still, I don't think it's really hit us yet, you know? Like it's mm -hmm. happening and we're like, yes, this is awesome. But we're not, I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna have to get home and get back to the States, lie in my own bed and be like, wow. Like, uh, it's really just an honor. Right, um, so the, the, the rest of the tour, is it like pretty much sold out? I think that I read that it was. Well, I don't know about the whole tour. Mm -hmm. Ticket sales haven't been as high in Europe, I don't think. Last I checked, and this was back in January before we had just left. I haven't really gotten too many updated numbers, but I just got word that we're sold out in Holland, which is tomorrow. Wow. So, yeah, in Tilburg. So that'll be really cool. We have a hotel in Amsterdam. We have a day off, finally, that we'll be spending in Amsterdam. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's definitely a good the, thing. I mean, come on. The survival of the tour or not. No, it'll be, it'll be great. It'll be great. Never been there. So that'll be a lot of fun. But I think something like eight out of the 11 UK shows have sold out. And really, I think it's just due to um, it's the lineup. Mm -hmm. You have finally three bands that all kind of make sense together. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the um, tours that we go on were kind of the oddball, or there are oddball bands to where fans might not want to come out and have to sit through that one band or or whatever it might be mm -hmm. and spend money to to not get 100 percent quality where on this tour when you have monuments and tesseract it's just i mean you'll see tonight cool yeah. i mean you find out like normally people turn up like halfway through a show don't they rather just to see the like um, headline and that sometimes that's the case yeah sometimes that's the case or you'll see everyone show up at the beginning and people will just leave after like this this one band that they really all came to mm -hmm. see we've experienced that on u.s tours where there's this scene kind of thing going on, which we don't really understand too much. Um, but the scene band will play, and then after that, even though the headliner might be this big marquee name, and I don't want to name any names for to to put examples on this, but it's just then half the crowd will leave, and it's like really, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but not the case with this one at all. Everyone sticks around from the beginning to the end. It's going to be wall to wall in this place tonight, and I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Um, so, Jake dislocated his finger. He did. He did. It was um, it was in Manchester the mm -hmm. third day before we had performed that night, and we got this new banner because we were headlining over here. We wanted to look cool and look like a headliner. <laughs> a banner that's creased, apparently. That I've just seen outside. Yeah. It's a little bit upset about getting out the shampoo <laughs> things and we're going to get it okay, maybe. But anyway, he was setting it up up on stage and he grabbed a monitor from the front of the stage using it as a stool. And they're not really shaped the best for a stool. Usually you'd probably want to use a stool, not, not a monitor. But So he took a spill and his hand, you know, your middle finger being the tallest one, just went oh, And he just snapped it out and it was just popping out the side. I immediately looked at it and went, just ran the other direction towards the production office calling or asking should I call 911 what do we do there was a hospital right across the street so we just took him over there 
and uh, you know, NHS took care of him for free, in and out the door, he got all bandaged up, but the doctor was like, you have to stay off of it for like two weeks, otherwise it could, it could mess it up for a while, and you know, he's a career guy, so he needs to stay off of it, but we have a guy filling in tonight, so that'll work out really well. Yeah. Um, so your badminton players? I said that you tweeted a picture of playing badminton. Some of the fans. Must have been. I think that was myself and our base player Tom the other day. I was unaware of this until you just said this <laughs> now. I do enjoy a shuttlecock from time to time, but no, I, uh, not very well. I mean, I remember playing it in like grade school a long time ago, but I'm not very good at it. I'm awful. So yeah. I just thought to bring up until then. No, it's it's great. I mean, all of a sudden in the middle of a venue and uh in Portsmouth mm-hmm. there, it was just set up and you know when you're waiting around That's at a true. venue as we do exactly <laughs> far too much for many hours um, you know we just started hitting it back and forth and then it turned in oh I want to try that I want to try that and it's just a lot of fun until there was some holes in the ceiling and that we started hitting them right up into the holes and like losing the shuttlecocks for the uh, I'm sure that's more fun maybe for yeah, me but maybe not for the guy who's paying for the shuttlecocks <laughs> 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 um, right, so everyone's got sick, apparently. Not everyone, but most everyone. I'm right now just kind of coming off of it, which is really good because tonight's this big show in London. I'm glad I'm feeling a bit better. But for the over the past, I don't know, I guess five days or so, everyone's just been, like, getting, hor- like, so ill to the point where they can't move. Like, our backstage areas look like hotel rooms because everyone's just, like, cuddled up in little corners sleeping like this. Oh, no. Yeah, it's put a little bit of a hit on the morale, I guess, but the shows have been so good. So even as sick as I've been, I go out on stage and there's just like, you know, loads of kids screaming our lyrics and I snap out of it just like that. I end up feeling horrible later on that night, of course, but, you know, it's really Oh, worth it. Exactly. 100%. And it's my job, you know, so I kind of have to do it. Right. So um, do you have some kind of warm up that you do before, like, you go on? stage or something uh, yeah I mean as a guitar player I like to like stretch the proper muscles that you need to use before going on stage and do some warm-ups on guitar maybe play like the first song that we're going to play something like that I also do the backup vocals for the band so when I hear Spencer doing his ridiculously wacky uh, vocal warm-ups I sometimes join in a little bit on that to try and warm that up and it's good to just get the blood flowing mm-hmm. I feel like kind of like the rock stance that you might get in you get some some action in the quads in your quadriceps so sometimes i'll just like sit there and like put weight on them <laughs> is this too descriptive <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be educational here as well as well as uh answer the question do you have anything to add anything you want to say to your fans anyone anything you want to plug um uh check out the band if you haven't already i mean really we're just on our this is our first time being over here we're just amazed that anyone knows who we are um facebook.com slash periphery bands where you can check us out um, definitely check out Tesseract and Monuments as well. Got any releases coming out soon? I think you've got. Yeah. We have an EP that's coming out um, later on, probably near the end of the spring. It's going to be uh, one of our singles from our first album called Icarus Lives. It's a remix album. It's called the Icarus EP. It's got some remixes of that song as well as some new material and some old B sides that we released just in Europe and Japan with Roadrunner and stuff like that that weren't released um, worldwide. So it will be released worldwide for that. Um, but yeah, aside from that, Tesseract and Monuments, definitely check them out as well. And we're just we're just happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you.